Welcome once again to this channel, offering the trickling water feature of criticism in the Zen Garden of Discourse. And as you know, I occasionally front load these vlogs with a diffident request for people to subscribe. But here is a comment I received last week from a Mr. Tony Clifton 265. I can't stand it when why tears beg people to subscribe. It's so undignified. Oh, no, you didn't, Tony Clifton 265. You did not just imply that my engagement with the digital customer base was in some way undignified. You must be talking about someone else, Tony Clifton 265. So let's just leave it at that, shall we? Mm? So the franchise brand Boulder rolls on and on, bringing us Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, in which the legendary archaeologist and whip-cracking adventurer is back for his fifth go-around. He is, of course, played by the legendary Harrison Ford, now 80 years young, but carrying it off with humour and style and still nailing that reluctant, crooked smile. I've seen things. Things I can't explain. And I've come to believe it's not so much what you believe. It's how hard you believe it. It's the first Indiana Jones film not to be directed by Steven Spielberg. James Mangold is now at the helm. But despite that, this one has got quite a bit of zip and fun. Phoebe Waller-Bridge has a tremendous co-star turn as Indy's roguish goddaughter Helena Shaw, like a naughty Enid Blyton heroine. And in fact, some amazing digital youthification effects give Indy himself a great opening flashback section in the Second World War. Back in the bad old days of 1944, intrepid young spy Indiana Jones is captured by the fiendish Nazis, along with his pal, Professor Basil Shaw, in which small role it is a pleasure to see Toby Jones. They grab what the Germans want, half of an artefact created by Archimedes, the Dial of Destiny, which allows its owner to control the forces of space and time, but which Archimedes prudently split into two and hid the other half. A chase with a nasty German, Jürgen Foller, played by Mads Mikkelsen, leaves this whole business unresolved. But fast forward to the present day, the space age 60s, and grumpy old Indiana Jones is retiring, miserable at his irrelevance in the modern world. But this same Foller, under a fake name, is the brains behind the Apollo moon landing and still dreams of controlling the universe by joining the Dial's two halves. Only Indy can stop him, along with his scapegrace godchild Helena, who is in fact making a dodgy living flogging antiquities on the black market. There are plenty of jolly chases, including a tuk-tuk versus classic jag event in the narrow streets of Tangier, and for the Indy purists, some creepy encounters with insects and an underground tomb whose passageways open up with a grinding noise. It is probably a bit cheeky to be giving Ford a young female co-star under this goddaughter tag, with a bantering tension that is really not too different to the platonic co-star he might have had in the previous movies. Yet the finale is silly and entertaining, and that dial of destiny is put to an audacious use, which makes light of the whole question of ageing and the gravitational pull of time. Indiana Jones still has a certain old-school class. And so the curtain is lowered on another vlog. Please give this one a like and share it avidly and excitedly on all your influential social media platforms. And of course, you won't want to listlessly scroll on to some other YouTube video without giving me a subscribe. And also, buy my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. Go and see these films at the cinema. See you soon.